How's it going, everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of The Forbidden Cast. Today is going to be a super special episode because I am interviewing Mr. Adam Smith of the band Riptide and rhythm guitarist of the band Evile. Adam is the frontman and guitarist for Riptide, and uh, yeah, I think everybody's really going to enjoy this interview. I know I certainly had a lot of fun uh, interviewing him. And uh, he, he certainly seemed like he, he was having a good time doing the interview as well. Um, uh, so, yeah, without a further ado, here's the interview with Mr. Adam Smith. All right, man. How are you? How are things? I'm good. How, how are you? I'm pretty good. So, uh, uh. <laughs> but uh yeah so uh i don't know if you would like me to introduce you or you want to introduce yourself it's uh completely uh, up to you well i'm adam i'm from the band riptide and i'm also the guitarist of evil uh, i'm the front man of riptide and the guitarist of evil and that is who i am uh yeah that's that's me <laughs> <laughs> all right man <laughs> yeah. yeah cool um uh well i mean uh i'm pretty excited about this interview because uh i i mean thank you first of all let's start off by just saying like th i want to thank you for reaching out to me and everything like that it, it means a lot to me absolutely man um uh i think it, it's it's really cool that you know we can help each other out in this sort of way because yeah. i'm i'm yeah i'm really <laughs> i I'm, i really want to help uh, I'm I'm really happy to help you know small up and coming you know podcasts and any any way I can help is great so yeah um I know we kind of got like a little bit of a script here but do, would you mind uh telling me how you end up found finding me or uh, uh so basically <laughs> I, I can't really remember I I um I just looked I was just looking if, you know, I was really researching, you know, uh, interviewers and and um, and podcasts, and and that's that's basically what I what I did. I honestly just on Instagram. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure from like other you know other people's tagged things. I, honestly, I can't remember. It was a, a few weeks ago. I just I've done so much, you know, research of like loads of things. So. So yeah, but that's basically it. Okay, yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm really glad I made that Instagram account then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, enough about me. Uh, the interview is for you. So, how about we dive into some questions here? So, uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, you just said you're a guitar player and you're a vocalist and you're a frontman and all that. So, uh, yeah. Um, how did you get your start in music? So, with um. So what? So I'll just start from the start. I, I think I've been uh, into. Me, I've been. I've had music in me all my life. I think, and I think it really um, came about. Like I, I got into music by like into heavy music and rock music, especially when I was young, uh, from watching things like uh, watching WWE, the oh, wrestling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to back in like back in two thousand and six, seven, whatever. I um, I was really into wrestling. I still am, but uh, you know, and I was really into um, the you know the music that they'd come out to. You know, the the, the music in the background with like their theme songs and whatever. Right. Um, and also, and you know, I really like what kept moved towards like metal. Uh, the metal metaler songs, like the more heavier ones right uh, and i just really liked that kind of type of music and also uh, again when i was young i was i got really into from that got into really got really into guitar hero oh, okay you know, yeah, again yeah, yeah. Uh, and that really was able i was really able to um you know uh, listen and you know really take in lots of different styles of rock and metal um, and I think just heavy metal really, uh, I had this real spark with heavy metal. I just love, love it, you know? So, uh, that's, that's how I really started in how I started getting into music. And from there, I, uh, I got a guitar when I was, I think nine years old, I got a Squire three quarter Strat <laughs> nice. uh, and I started playing, um, 
guitar then um like prop like well not yeah i i got it for christmas and i just started i just loved playing guitar and i got to i think that's when i properly started but i might have been it's around that time i can't really remember but uh, yeah uh and then after after that like once i got to a certain level i couldn't find many uh, members of bands like you know and you know members for for a band uh, which i really wanted when i was like you know 13 14 so i we i basically went to this rock school of rock type of place okay um, and honestly it's really cool like i was 13 when i went there and basically what we do is you'd meet lots of other people who go into this like it's school honestly it's like school of rock the film okay, and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and it, it, it honestly just like that and we, but it was like a music school um for young guitarists and we're all about the same age and we all they'd all pick a song like a metal song and we would be in them i was in the metal you know rock jam group and uh and that's when i really started performing and playing uh with other people properly um and yeah, that's that's how I got my start into like into playing music and playing in front of people. Uh, and yeah, that, I think that's that's it really. Just listening to lots of different music and and finding that thrash is the best one for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. <laughs> so yeah, that that's basically it. All right. Sweet. Well, is there um uh, is there any like specific band names that you could uh, give me as like biggest like kind of influences or like even well, artists? Um, for influences uh, in as I think there's there's been a lot over the time over the years, but for for specifically for like thrash metal that really got me to playing guitar to a really you know a proficient level, like a real you know properly playing guitar. Um, probably bands like um, oh, the Megadeth, Metallica, mainly you know the the big four. Yeah. Um, and but also like newer bands such as like Lost Society. They're really good. Uh, they they really I, I really liked them because they were a young band too, and I'm I wanted to be in a young band, and I was able to see them playing thrash metal to a level where that that what the older bands did back in um the eighties, but I never got to see that obviously. So seeing other young bands playing thrash and going mental in HD on YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Was um... really it was really cool to for me to that it really got me into wanting to play very, you know, be in a proper thrash band and properly do it, you know? So that's so yeah, that 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 that's uh, that's probably explains it. But like, what the? But like, when I was a bit younger than that, I really wanted. I played a lot of Slipknot. I loved Slipknot when I was about thirteen. Okay. And I, I played a lot of. Uh, it played, it pra- you know, practiced Slipknot songs constantly. But I wasn't into like specifically properly into thrash, and I was just loving metal. And uh, yeah, so that's that's basically it. I think yeah. Sweet man, actually, um, uh, just just to step back a bit there to mention like uh, watching, uh, Lost Society. I I remember stumbling across Lost Society too and watching uh, their Battle of the Band performance when like oh, yeah. Sammy looked like he was like twelve or something. Of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That's it. I mean, and that's that's what I loved. Like that's what I was like amazed by it. I was like, you know, the first, the one of the first bands I saw that were going that mental and really young too. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah. also in the few, like, I mean, recently, and um, a band that I've I really do like as well, uh, Alien Weaponry, um, who, who who are from New Zealand, and I absolutely like. I think they're just awesome because they're just changing the way of frigging metal is and they're young as well and they're going mental and you know and i was i lived in new zealand for a while when i was when i was really young and it's really cool to see like them singing in maori and like you know really pushing new zealand so i think i think they're really cool too but i wouldn't say they're like a influence but i've seen them a couple of times and they're really great guys too so ah sweet yeah 
I'll have, I'll have to check them out. I actually never heard yeah, of them. Yeah, they're great. They're a great band. <laughs> they're, they're about the same age as me. Their band, so I think they're like twenty, maybe just like they're a few months younger than me. Like okay. I think they might be nineteen or something. It's like, and they just they're just uh just really good. You should check them out. They're sick. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um. Uh, oh. But yeah, yeah, talking uh talking about guitars and all that. Um. Uh, do you have any? favorite pieces of gear or anything like amps or pedals or whatnot so what i what i'm using at the moment is a my all-time like the best thing i've ever had in the world is the kemper okay uh, is, I, I've, I've got it recently um and it is incredible absolutely like you know all the every amp i could ever want on on it and well like the tone is exactly like pretty much 99% is exactly the same as having the amp. So I would like the Kemper is my all time favorite thing ever. It's just insane, like how good it is, man. I can't like, but yeah. Um, and also, uh, I, I play Jackson. Um, I've got a Demolition V. I'm getting another V soon as well from Jackson, which is really cool. I can't wait for that. Is it a and, custom shop or? Uh, it's not, it's not a custom shop, but it, I don't want to give away too much because oh, I want to like, but uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a V. I mean, I basically gave it away to be fair. It's, it's a V. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, you know, you don't have all the specifics, of course, but. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I cannot wait for that. I've, I've had this Demolition V. It's red with a black bevel. Um, and I've had it for since I was 14, I think. Damn, man. And it's, it's just the best instrument. I've, it's insanely good. Uh, and and yeah and I, I've and what I, and I also I'm also um, I also play windspear strings and use windspear picks okay. which are absolutely killer that they're, they're a British company um, and that because they're handmade and everything's like you know done on a small scale it's like they, it, uh, Tom at windspear really takes care of uh, of us and uh, and just he's just great and that the the quality is just top notch so yeah that's yeah. uh wind spear yeah i've, I've been uh, i've been wanting to check them out actually because i i've been using like chicken picks mostly but, oh yeah but uh yeah the the wind spear look really cool i want to check those out too yeah i'm uh they're, they're awesome yeah what uh what kind of pickups you got into demolition there i've got uh emg's 81 and 60s 81s and 60s it's just the hets hetfield uh like setup kind of thing it's not the same as they're not hetfield's pickups but they like basically like the similar so I, so when i change the pickup to the uh the neck it sounds when i've got the james hetfield goddamn tone on the kemper it's like it feels like i am james hetfield <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah um and i've got 81s in my bridge which is predominantly what I use, unless it's clean tones. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. What? Uh, what, what? Well, okay. You said you have the strings on. What gauge of string you got on there? Oh God, <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not good at this. I've, I always forget. I think it's. I think it's nine. Oh God, I, I don't want to say it because I'm not gonna. I, I think it's nine to fifty-two. Okay. Yeah. That makes. Are you just I'm, like E standard or? E, uh, well, for Eval we play an E flat, but and oh. for for Riptide we play an E standard. But, okay. Uh, yeah, so I think it's I think it's nine to it's either nine to forty six or nine to fifty two. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. That sounds familiar because I mean I I think that's the same kind of strings that I get to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, it's it's so I've got I've got um I think I've got heavier strings on the top, and then uh, lighter on the bottom for the solos. Yeah. yeah yeah can't remember exactly but oh god it's because we're not gigging i'm not like you know i'm not i'm not in that gig mindset at the moment so it's like i you know i've hardly been had to change them or whatever and they're all it's all quite new to me but, mm. but yeah that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah i bet you must miss touring eh? <laughs> oh god absolutely yeah. but once once everything once everything gets back uh to normal we're yeah. gonna be. I'm. 
I'm going to be very busy. Oh Let's yeah. Just say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, um, uh, if, uh, if we want to go from there, um, so obviously you're in two bands, you're in Evile and you're in Riptide. Um, yep. So would you mind just kind of laying down like who is in Riptide and uh, even who's in Evile? So with, with Riptide, um, it, it's me, I'm, I'm the vocalist and guitarist. We've got Sean on bass and we've got Jason on drums. Um, and we, we work so well together. Um, and um, with, for Evile, um, we've got, I, I'm the rhythm guitarist, Oz lead and vocals. Ben is on drums, the machine, and <laughs> Joel is on the bass. But yeah, um, with with Riptide, uh, we've, we've had, you know, lineup changes and whatever, but like right now we, we're... Uh, we're just a three piece, but because we are tour, um, because we're not gigging, it's not a big priority for me at the moment um, to, to find a guitarist right this right like right now because we're so into the Inhuman Race, um, you know, singles. Uh, we're releasing singles, and we've we've just released Inhuman Race, mm -hmm. and it's just not on our like. I'm not even thinking about it to be honest. It's because because we're not going to gig in the in, for you know for at least three three or four months from now at least. So um, it's it, and it's been it's been like that for a while. But we've just we've just been wanting to get um, songs out. That's been our plan. And for so in that when, when we start gigging again, we will be looking for a new guitarist. Um, but as of right now, it's we're just a three piece. But it's working really well because me and Sean um, are working together on on the production of of the singles, and um, and obviously Jason. We record we record the drums with Jace at, at Jason. We record the drums at a, a a recording studio, and then basically we just we take the drums and then Sean is like basically our production guy. Okay. Cause he's, he studies, he does production in, um, in university. Oh, does he? Okay. And cool. Yeah. So it's really, I, I'm really glad that we I'm able to, well, not at, like we're able to, um, release music and have Sean on board doing the production because it means that we have a long time to work on stuff and he's getting better at production we don't have to pay anyone for production and uh and each time it's just going to be better and better and we have like so much time to to fit you know work on it and and go well what do we like there's no time limit basically for us other than you know getting the drums recorded we pet you know we get them professionally done and then we basically come to to my studio and record the basically record everything di um, okay i mean Sean, sean's a lot better at this i just basically <laughs> tell him what's what sounds good okay but, uh, <laughs> he, he, he sorts he sorts all the tech stuff out and um and yeah and that's that's what we do and it, it honestly with with in human race it's the first one we've done completely us three only um and i'm incredibly proud of how it's turned out and how good it sounds um because we're using the we're using the kemper on the guitar tones and we're using the sans amp which is sean's bass tone okay um, which is basically a pedal that, yeah that uh, leads that, that it's basically like a kemper but for bass and it's well, honestly this tone is absolutely killer which you can hear on the record um but um yeah and that's what we do and it's it, honestly it's turned out so well and we've been able to you know, use our money in different places rather than just into like recording and Sean's getting better. So each with each um, release, uh, it's the quality is going to be better and better and better and better. And so I, I can't, I'm super, super happy about that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Like you're, uh, 
the new single sounds great it sounds really tight and thank you lots of lots of low end and yeah it really hits yeah. you in the face um yeah it, it's cool too because you guys got the your first single was out in 2016 correct yeah um so uh go on you carry on yeah um uh yeah but uh I, don't know, I was just going to say, like, the comparison between the two, like, it, it sounds, Absolutely. there's a huge difference, and it sounds awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's, that's, um, that's because I actually, you know, obviously, Riptide started in 2018 properly, oh, but yeah. it was a song that I recorded myself at the studio that we, we worked, uh, that, that we used to rehearse in, but it's closed down now, but um, basically... With that, I was actually not in a band at that time, but I was writing old songs, uh, you know, when I was about 15 and 16. Um, and that was a song that I really wanted to put out to find members. Mm -hmm. So it's actually um, actually a fun fact uh, that actually Ben Carter from Evil is actually playing the drums on uh, Behind the Killer's Eyes. Really? Uh, yeah, so... Because I've been, we've been friends for like years. Okay. But um, so it, it's all it all connects. It's crazy. But uh, like, it's so that he was really, it was really great for him when I was, I was, what I was like fifteen, come going on to sixteen then, mm. and I wrote this song and I didn't have a drummer, I didn't have anyone, and I basically, you know, asked him to, to, uh, play the drums on 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 it, and he was like, yeah, absolutely, and. So, so what we did was we, uh, when I first joined, no, when, when we first started Riptide, I had that song already recorded, but it was just an ad. It was just my song to try and get members because that was my, my thought process then was to, you know, get a band, but I need to try and I need to prove that, you know, that the songs, the songs that I've got are, are good. So I was like, what could we do? We, so I wrote, I, I did put that song out so i could find members and then when we met when i met sean and jason we kind of like played through it and it worked and i was definitely going to use it for the thrash band i was going to be in it was just something to get a band you know mm -hmm. um and then what happened then so yeah we met and then I, I just basically was like we should just release this so we don't you know we, we can spend our money on you know buying gear yeah and, that, and, and whatever so we released that just just so we had something on spotify and we had and then we recorded master the apocalypse but that was when you know we had a band that was just it was just so we had two singles rather than one mm -hmm. um, and master the apocalypse was the second single that we released and that was released under the same studio as uh, behind the Killer's eyes but we've had uh some like we had lots of production issues and you know it it really it didn't like i know that uh i wasn't happy with the the production on on like some of the other songs we already recorded like like in human race we we recorded in human race this three times before okay. we released it because we had my plan was when i was when i was like you know younger i really believed that like i really really wanted an album i wanted a vinyl of a riptide vinyl and a you know riptide album i could release and it'd be great you know mm -hmm. like master of puppets or whatever that's that's like what i thought you know yeah and basically what we did was we tried to we wanted to record loads of songs that i had in the bank but we it, the, the production quality wasn't there and i was really like but by the time we had like we were going through it i didn't i realized that it's actually it doesn't it's not at the standards that i want it to be in 2018 or whatever because i just wanted i, I wanted songs out fast but i didn't have the money to put to make an album that was a good standard so we've held on to these songs and now is the right time for us to to release them and and that's the kind of the plan we've got and because We've got so much time to work on them with Sean as well. Like, uh, as I've said about like, in, we're producing it together. It means that we can put out singles and not be worried about, not be too stressed, and just take our time with it. And with the, with and and be at a really good production level. So that's the kind of the the 
but yeah that that's it really <laughs> <laughs> all right man. no yeah that totally that totally totally makes sense um, yeah uh, yeah because it's it's not it's not cheap to go into a studio <laughs> exactly. exactly and especially you know i was i was probably just i was just turning 18 at the time like I was 17 or whatever and we all didn't really have any money and we you know we were still in college and whatever so it was really difficult for us to get so many songs out to a really good level and and but but not have any money either so i said forget that let's just let's just you know build up our money by buying merch and try and build up a big stream of you know make some money from gigs and from so we had obviously we put money in ourselves and whatever but um but yeah i was uh, you know over time it we, we kind of put we put our money in different places than what i thought we would have to when i was younger basically yeah because so, what I, I i because we're, we're basically it's it's quite cheap for us to record now and, and make a song we try and put our money in other places like in merch and like in you know uh just yeah like like that really and uh you know advertising and whatever so mm -hmm. it's it's that's kind of what we do so yeah I, that's basically it <laughs> yeah okay yeah well yeah because uh I don't, do you watch ola england at all or uh uh i i know of him the youtuber yeah yeah well because yeah, he, yeah. he had this thing uh where he did like a panel at some sort of con and he uh he had mentioned how like albums are dead you know so it's like it's better yeah for... yeah exactly well i could i could go on a big tangent about that too yeah so, i mean i mean <laughs> basically how i see it I, I i'm i'm always gonna like live by this because i, I mean not always but like i'm always gonna keep saying this is just what i think and uh so I've, I've said it multiple times but how i think is that you know i've seen bands who are really good but they'll, they'll release an album like you know i wanted to and uh and so, like for example i could just say like this basically if if i put if riptide put an album out um after you know 10 songs Mm -hmm. that'd be great i'd be able to push the album everyone would be like yay an album and i'd be like this is great i've got a vinyl you know you know for for me yeah that'd be cool yeah but then after two weeks after a month after you know uh, however long six weeks max really for an underground band a small band it's very hard to keep the momentum after releasing an album because you know it might take a, a, you know over a year to write some really good songs for an album and basically after when you promote the album everyone would like it and especially that we because we can't tour either and we can't properly tour anyway because we don't have booking agents we don't have you know management or whatever um it's quite hard to sell it as well so how in my opinion it's much easier and actually this is it god i'm going on a tangent <laughs> no no it's basically, all good man no. um, <laughs> basically again with the spotify with spotify and with these new distributors and and uh, the, just the new way of uh, consuming music is that spotify like if if you if i really if we release an album someone might listen to the first song and li and like it or dislike it and then they go on they might go on to the second song if they like that but then they might get bored and turn it off and then by the, a lot of people nowadays are so it's so easy for them not to listen to music whereas like in the 80s or whatever you you had to go to the vinyl store buy a vinyl put the vinyl on and then because you paid a lot of money for it as well yeah it's so you, you're gonna listen to the whole album and you've paid for it too whereas now all the music's free yeah you know basically <laughs> and you can you can listen to it and but my point is if you have a single um 
if you release a single, everyone's going to listen to it. And if you release another single, everyone's going to listen to it again. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and I could release 10 singles and have more streams than if I put an album out. And that's, you know, I want people to hear the music and that's, and that's how I think really, but that's just my opinion. You know, people can do whatever they want. That's just what I yeah think. well i mean but, honestly it's just a, a smarter route to go because i mean like absolutely yeah it's just now yeah, it, it totally makes sense um yeah uh, <laughs> uh, it's like it's just and it makes it a lot easier for us as well we're not stressed we don't and we're not we're not um also we're not out of you know we're always being able to produce content for for, for social media too so yeah it's it's we're always like new single every month or every however long you know every three months every two months whatever right um we are able to do that consistently over the space of two years or whatever rather than release an album and not post and not have anything really t to release until after two years and then have an album and then you do the same thing again and you, this it's really hard to just stay relevant on social media because it's such it's so hard to do so that's uh, that's why we release singles anyway. That's and, and it's also obviously because it makes it a lot easier for me and Sean and Jason to be able to push us something to to work on one song, do it as best as we can, and then put it out and then move on to the next. And then rather than going because like the way we did it before was let's do all the drums and then all the guitars and then all the bass and then you know we spend it's too much we just want to work on one at a time really and it just makes everything easier for us mm -hmm. so and and then and the fans get a new song every time whereas if 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 we released an album everyone like a lot of people would think it's great and want you know but there's a lot of people who wouldn't as well and it's hard it's just it's just so hard to get people to listen yeah so, but yeah, sorry, I've just went on a massive tangent. I always do this. No, this no. Uh, I this mean, is what I think. Yeah, man. I mean, you're passionate it. about it, so absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, and the thing too that like kind of came to my mind as well is like, as you keep releasing singles, like over time, when you think about it, it's like, like say if you release like at least like five singles throughout like an entire year, like that's an yep. EP, you know? Like exactly. So it's I, like, I, yeah. I always get. I always get messages like, because um, we've got five singles now. Yeah. Uh, someone goes, "Oh, where's your album? Where's your EP?" Uh, I just, I just tell them to. I just go, if you go on Spotify, you can make a playlist and put all of our songs in the playlist, and then you've got an EP. Yeah, I mean that's you know? what, that's what I whenever uh, whenever you message me and I checked out your Riptide there. That's I mean that's what I did. I went and bought them all on yeah. iTunes and I just put oh, them in a awesome. playlist. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but no, yeah, man. that's that's it. I mean, <laughs> I, I just I just think it's just the way it's the, it's the the trends that I've seen, and I'm really into you know looking what how how is it best for us to do it rather than rather than what do I want. It's how is it how how is it best for people to how is it best for me to get it in front of as many people as possible, and that's that's how how I really go about it rather than going I you know. I, I really, really would love to have an album, like, mm. but that's not a good idea at the moment. That's 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 in my opinion, you know. Yeah, I'd love to have a vinyl, and I'd love to, you know, it's like a childhood, you know, dream. I've always wanted like Riptide. Like, imagine having Riptide on a vinyl. But yeah, we will, we will eventually. It's just, it's just, I just don't. It's not in our. Uh, it's, it's just not what we 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 can't do that right now that's that's basically it so yeah well i mean because th that's the thing too about doing the singles thing is like i mean you need to build your fan base somehow exactly. you know so it's exactly. like and then once you do have like a good enough following then then you can release albums exactly. and you know, people exactly. will buy it yeah um, absolutely yeah that's 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 how i see it as well i mean and yeah that's that, exactly that um <laughs> yeah that's it yeah, well, I mean, that was a good little tangent that you went on there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. I'd, oh. I'd re I'm really, I really, uh, I'm really interested in that stuff. Like, uh, you know, I, I think it back in the '80s or whatever. If I was living in the '80s, my, I would be doing what is best 
for Riptide in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't live like that now. So I'm doing what is best for Riptide right now, according to what I've seen, you know? Yeah. So if you know what I mean, like we're not signed, you know, it's not like we can, we can do an album and then do a world tour or whatever. And then people buy the album. It's just not going to happen. You've got to try and give as much value to people on a constant basis. And then, and then hopefully they'll see it and, and then they'll go, I want an album. But if you don't do that, they're never going to want the album that you put out, you know? No. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, like that comparison is perfect because I mean like, yeah, the, the, media has changed like everything has changed so it's just like you know i mean like if you do look at old metallica videos and stuff like that like you see you know with dave mustaine playing you know that really shitty like show i don't know if you know what i'm talking about yeah i've seen it of course i have yeah yeah um uh, but like yeah like you know imagining metallica doing a bunch of shows like that and then like finally you know getting signed somewhere but yeah yeah absolutely you know for like a nowadays sort of thing like that it just doesn't really happen you know like it's, it's really hard it's, it's incredibly difficult and you know for you, you've just got to be consistent over the years and that's 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 what i hope to do mm-hmm. for riptide but yeah that's that's the most that's the thing with uh with that's just how i think really <laughs> yeah and it's what the, the band all agrees and you know we we but when 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 the time comes to produce an album and we, you know, we will do it at the top quality we can and it will be, you know, it'll be at the right time. But for now it's just singles, mm-hmm. maybe an EP, maybe that might happen, but it's, uh, I just, uh, yeah, that's it really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, sweet man. Um, uh, so I think, uh, I would like to, kind of ask you now about because obviously you know you're the vocalist uh i would imagine you're the one who writes the lyrics to the songs as well um do you think you can give us like some lyrical content that you like to write like write about or uh, even in the new song in human race like what what is that song about and so with so i write some i write most well me and sean co-write lyrics but again it's been quite a while since we've we've uh wrote any anything together because of you know the pandemic and everything and we uh, but with lyrical content um basically i i've always thought that what i'd like to write about and what i do is like extensions or or like imaginations of what could happen if think you know bad things that like how do i explain it like (laughs) (laughs) just like the songs are about things like it about dystopian kind of things like you know if we went down this path and and you know uh, all countries started um you know another war or or it's like future not futuristic but like almost like dreams, like almost like, you know, if we went down this path, if the world, the society went down this path, what would it look like Mm -hmm. kind of thing? Everything's just like hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, the stuff I've wrote is, is definitely like that for, for a few things. Um, but I know that Sean, I don't want to like speak behalf of him, but I know that he's very into like films and, uh, similar things to me a bit more brutal mm. um but and you know he like really loves and he loves like you know games he's proper into gaming okay uh, <laughs> i am too but not like the same stuff you know like first person games i don't know what games he plays okay uh, but, but uh he, he he you know like call of duty kind of vibe stuff i think mm. but um i think he he, he likes those like I can't name a game because I'm so not like into that like you know uh, circle. But yeah. um, he, he's into like dystopian games, and he, he he gets a lot of his thoughts from games. I think as far as uh, I've spoke with him, and 
so yeah, that's uh, that, that's our ideas anyway, and then they fr- they they come to fruition when they, we work together on on some stuff. But for Inhuman Race, uh, it's it's actually I, I wrote that when I was fifteen before I met Sean. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, exactly. So um, I know it, it, this is this is the thing. Like because of everything that happened in the past, that it's been really. I always wanted to put the songs out. I didn't want to scrap them or I didn't want to, you know, start fresh because I, I, I knew that I really believed that they were really good. Mm-hmm. So I didn't want to scrap them, but we've been working, I've been working on them like for so long. So when, um, uh, like for, for the lyrical content of Inhuman, I basically, when I was 15, it was around the time when I, started going to like big cities and like uh like i I started going to like manchester which is uh like a local city uh to me okay like on my own properly like (laughs) i didn't really go to cities that much because you know i was you know younger and whatever i didn't need to Mm -hmm. but uh and it was really it really shocked me like how much homelessness there is and it was um, it was that that like made me want to write the song, and it's it's basically about like homelessness and how how I, like what I depicted of it, you know, as a kid as well. Like, um, so yeah, that that's that's the lyrical content of, of in human race. But okay. with the other influences, it's like it was it's. It's that what I've already said, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like just like dystopian things and like destruction. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we write about? Just like not not too brutal stuff, but like stuff that makes you think a little bit. And but nothing like super political. We're not like Rage Against the Machine, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, so it's. Yeah, it's I, I, honestly, I I just write what I want to write about, really. Mm. Um, but it's so it kind of changes between each song and whatever. But uh, yeah, Sean Sean does input quite a lot of lyrics for for some of the for quite a lot of the songs. So it's I don't know what's going in his on in his head when he, <laughs> you know, he goes, "What do you think of this?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, by the sounds of it, it sounds like you guys got a really good chemistry going on, which is oh, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're like brothers. We we um we we've hit off like so well. We've known each other for a really long time now. No, oh, okay. like I met him, I met him in college, and we you know he couldn't he couldn't play bass, and we basically like and he was one of the first people I found that would that was proper into the music and really nice as well because I've always thought. Like, especially now, especially, like, I really, we, it's way more important for me and Riptide to put out, um, didn't, not put out, uh, to work with people who are so, who are really nice guys Mm -hmm. and, like, really click with each other, click with us, click with, like, me. And because, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know crazy I, i'm really i'm quite a serious person but you know i just but you know it's it it's got to work you know in, in that aspect so like when i met sean sean was just such a, he's so into metal and so into into wanting to be in a band but he he couldn't really play bass <laughs> so uh, i kind of I, we just became friends and I, I showed him some of the songs and he just practiced. He practiced so much, like it's insane amount of practice. It's like I, he put he practiced in like for the past. He still does, but mm-hmm. like he practiced like mad. Like I've never seen anyone practice like that. Like he'd be like, I've, I've been practicing for twelve hours straight, <laughs> or whatever one song or whatever. And I was like, you know, and that's the dedication that like you know I really like about him. And he's just became an incredible bassist and. uh so yeah so the point is that like the people that I th- i've always thought it's much more important to work with people who you you know who work with the who 
understand you and we just work together well rather than like being the best guitarist or whatever yeah because if if the best guitar if, you know if, if we had auditioned someone and the guitarist was incredible but he was a dick mm-hmm. I, I would I, I wouldn't want him i'd rather someone who wasn't he wasn't you know the greatest of guitar and because i know that you know in a year in six months in two years he, he will be a lot better and you know a really good guitarist too so it's all about um how you know how you gel with people um but yeah that that, and that's 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 how i think of it anyway it's i just really uh think it's important to work with people you you like rather than have a great incredible tight band because that will happen if you're good you know you, you work together well because you'll be practicing and you'll be into it and you'll you know so yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean and speaking of sean like the, the dude is so fucking funny i uh oh he's I, hilarious because uh i i watched uh, his little like cooking segments on your channel there. oh god so, yeah they're so funny so, <laughs> exactly he's, he's a proper character and he like he he just he's proper good on camera and good uh he's a very social person whereas i'm a little bit more introverted mm. um but um but he he can you know i always he's whenever i'm worried he's not worried at all he's just so chill you know <laughs> like um uh, and he, he can just he talks to you know he's really good at talking to people whereas i find it a bit more harder to do but um but yeah he, he, and that and that's why we work together because he, he, you know we he works on his strengths and i work on my strengths and it, it, we you know we focus on the things that and then we work together and it just everything works perfectly and there's you know we never argue we never none none of this you know shitty band you know things happen with between us and jason jason's just completely chill mm. you know he just he just rocks up and plays the drums and <laughs> uh just super chill guy um but you know me and sean we're able we talk a lot more about what we're doing so that's that's you know and then jason goes what we're doing and then we go this and then he goes okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's very we're very laid back and we're very um but we're also very serious on what we want to do and then but after we've achieved something really cool that's where we, like and during we do you know drew during we are we the process of it that's that's what we enjoy and that's why you know i think that's why we we just work so well together because we're all just super chill so yeah <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so yeah that's 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 us um yeah sweet man well yeah well is uh is there anything else that uh you'd like to say on here um, kind of... well with uh the fu- with the future plans yeah of Riptide, yeah um we've basically got um we haven't you know the gigs are, we aren't we aren't really thinking about gigs at the moment but mm. we are um with the the plans for us are right now at right at this moment is you know keep pushing the uh, inhuman race and we're going to be releasing some merch soon um and that's you know that's that's like in the real near future and and then from that we're going to be keeping keeping on releasing singles um you know taking our time with it but also pushing them out you know as fast as possible at the same time um and also uh, and then with gigs in the after once everything's back uh, back to normal and when when we can start gigging properly again, right? We want to um, we want to do more headline shows. I feel like you know by then we're going to have enough songs out, and we're just trying to build a following on social media for now, mm-hmm. um, so that the peak, so that when we do tour, you know we'll have a fan base because and that's because there's nothing we can do at the moment with 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 gigs and whatever so yeah exactly <laughs> it's really um i think we're using our time to you know the things that we can really work on mm-hmm. because once gigs are back on it's going to be like really crazy for us we're going to be really busy so um so yeah that's that's the that's the kind of 
future plans. We want to play bigger festivals. We want to play bigger shows. We want to like kind of spiral out of our hometown, okay. which is Huddersfield. And we want to, we've kind of, we've spread a little bit, but because we were, you know, we're quite young and back then, because it's been a year since we played a show. So okay. it's like, it feels like we, we're just on pause, but time is going by you know so yeah <laughs> it, it's, it, and and we like you know getting older you know mm-hmm. um, so obviously it's got to be a lot easier for us to be able to go further afield um and yeah that that's that's basically the plans for yeah for, for riptide and i think i think it's gonna it's the plan is working right now so i think uh it's gonna it's everything's going to fall into place and work really well for us. So, yeah, that's that. that they're the main things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm I'm definitely excited to see what uh, what else you guys got in store for oh, us. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really appreciate it, man. Um, but yeah, like obviously we haven't uh, J Hoff Films, uh, not J Hoff Films. Jesus, uh, it's uh, thrashed. TV? Thrash TV, yeah. which is Chris Thrash's um, new thing, new channel. Okay. Uh, I should probably just plug this, but uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris, who is ex J Hoff Films, he. Um, oh, I just say that because uh, I used to watch him back in the day, okay. uh, like a lot when I was <laughs> younger. Uh, it's it's so cool to be working with him. We released a. Um, the single on Thrashed TV, which is Chris's new uh, channel. And we, there's a contest on there if you want to go and check that out and follow him and uh, subscribe. Uh, but yeah, that's, that, that's really cool. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for that so uh, people awesome. can check that out. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's basically it, I think. <laughs> All right. Cool, man. Well, um, uh, yeah, everybody... Please go check out Riptide. Go give these guys your love and support because they're fucking awesome. Um, Thank uh, you. And yeah, go check out their new single, Inhuman Race, because it also kicks ass. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. And... You can find me on Instagram uh, at Riptide4D4M, um, which is which is my name, but it's with fours instead of A's. Oh, okay, I get yeah. I, I, I could throw your the, like the Instagram link in the description as well yeah, if you'd cool. like. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so that that's basically it, man. I, I'm thanks for thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, okay. And it's been really cool to talk to you. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it, uh, I was really looking forward to talking to you. You, you seem like a really cool dude. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Well, uh, I mean, hey, man, thank you for reaching out. It's, it, I mean, it means a lot to me too. <laughs> uh, awesome. I'm, I'm glad to help. Um, you know, I, I like, I like to see young, uh, you know, what's the word? Uh, small, like, I think I've already said this. I'm a, yeah. more, uh, <laughs> Jesus, oh God. I'm, I... hey man, don't worry. I'm, I, I, I yeah. repeat myself all the time on the podcast. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I just, I'm glad to help uh, any anyone who, who needs it. Really, anyone, if I can help in any way, I'm really, I want to. I'm, I really like doing that because yeah. I just feel like I want to give back to all the, you know, all the support I've had over this, especially the past few months. It's been insane. Yeah. So. Man. I mean, hey, I mean, it can only go up, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, thanks. Um, thanks a lot for this, man. I really appreciate it. Um, with, what was I going to say? So are you going to put this on Instagram? Are you going to put clips on Instagram? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Cool. And then where, where do you, is, is it on YouTube? Your... It is, yeah. Or, it's... Are you putting it on Spotify or um so i mean i actually haven't uh have it on spotify and yeah. apple music well not apple right. music but apple podcast um just because yeah. i haven't been able to find a proper distributor for it yet so right right yeah cool. but no that's fine i just i'll 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 put i'll drop the link i'll make a post about this uh, well thank yeah, you man that's great <laughs> um no it's been great to talk to you man i really appreciate it because you know this is the first time i've like really tried to get promotion and mm-hmm. i think 
I think everyone's really enjoying the single, so. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Cool, man. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been... So, where, where are you from? I'm from Canada. Uh, in, oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm in uh, Ontario. Well, I mean, I uh, live in, in Quebec, like just on the border, yeah. but I, I'm originally from uh, Ontario. Cool. cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, oh, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I've got, yeah, I'm just I'm happy I've, I've been able to help. And, you know, we'll, I'll share this. And it's it's, you know, for me, it's as much content as possible, like constant mm-hmm. and really hard. For, I really find it hard to, you know, think of, you come up with good content for the fans. And I think this will be really great for them. So yeah, it's good. It's good. Cause I, it's all about, you know, consistently posting. That's what I'm trying to do. So it'll be, it's just really great um, for me to be able to plug you, you know? So mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, like I said before, too, I mean, it helps me out a ton, too, which, I mean, I, I'm i honestly so grateful for, because, I mean, like, oh, like no worries. man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, cool. I hope it helps. Um, but, yeah, just, I, I don't know. Just, you, just do whatever you want. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it, really. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks right, a lot, man. man. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Cheers. Cheers, right, man. I'll, I'll bang them. Bye. See ya. <laughs> See ya. See ya, man. Well, everybody, that concludes this interview with Adam Smith of Riptide and Evile. Please go show Adam and his bands some love and support by following their Instagram accounts, liking their Facebook pages, just all that social media stuff. It might seem little and just kind of like it doesn't really do much but it really does uh have a big impact because the more people that uh, see musicians and artists stuff the more it gets spread out so it that it just the littlest things that you can do as a fan um uh, really helps us out but uh yeah thank you so much for watching everybody it uh, means the world to me like i say nearly every podcast and a huge thank you to adam for reaching out to me to do this uh also means the world to me that you did that um uh, so yeah so please go check out riptide's new single inhuman race it is out now on all streaming platforms and check out their other stuff and uh I believe if you head over to Evile's Instagram page and, well, probably just all their social medias, they have something coming out soon as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, I should mention that uh, all the links to all the stuff will be in the description below. So you can check that out. Uh, But I think that is going to do it for today, everybody. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night or whenever you listen to this. Uh, And uh, I will catch you all on the next one. See you later, everybody. (laughs) 